Hey legends, this is Magnus. How you doing? In this video, I'm I just want to speak on as you can see from the video from my background here here with on the rest of the screen, something about the Proud family louder and pr prouder. Um I have seen all the episodes of season 2. I liked it. I thought it was really good. But there there are two specific episodes I want to speak on. On the one that I didn't the one that I least liked and the one that I loved the most and probably my favorite episode of of the series as a whole. So, oh, spoilers ahead for those who haven't seen these two episodes, which I'll just say right now, The End of Innocence and BB. So I'll be speaking on those two episodes. Now, I'm going to go into prop. I have a timer right here. I'm going to have a five minutes to speak on one episode and five minutes on the other because I feel like with either or I can ramble for too long. So please comment, like, subscribe, share this video, react to my madness. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you all so much for 97 subscribers as of the recording of this video. Let's get into it. So to start off with, um, to start off with the end of it, since I just want to start with the one I didn't like that much. I understand the uh, message it was going for. So for those who don't know, it basically, that episode dealt with colorism and likely uh, uh, elsewhere on YouTube, you've heard about it, where it basically has Noah Barker, a famous actor from a show called Otter Things. I immediately got the reference to Stranger Things. Um, asking Zoe to the school dance and, and the whole rest of the crew crew, Maya, Dijanae, and uh, La Cienega, and Penny, and Michael being a j bunch of jerks because apparently from some, from what Maya heard from somebody that Noah was only into white girls. And the reason that I feel the execution of this topic was done so wrong, in my opinion, I, I really, I didn't like the execution of the episode there were parts of it that i did like for example the uh the uh disney princess dress up competition that i that i thought was cool um but the message itself it's not a bad subject to touch on the way it was executed was terrible in my opinion because one big flaw i had with this was that we never heard we never heard it, heard this view, the view of, of colorism t from Noah himself. All we ever heard was from somebody else. Like Maya heard it from one person. And then at the end, Zoe says, okay, Noah told her, maybe Noah told her, but the problem is at least to the audience, we never hear this from him because we never hear it from him, him. I just feel like the message could be construed. It could be twisted. Like like someone's perception of it can change when you're not hearing it from the source. And the crew basically want like bullied and cutting Zoe off just because he didn't ask any of them out to the dance is just that is unaccept unacceptable. I hated that. I hated it. Uh and one like from La Siega and Maya and Michael I can I can give you almost a pass I can almost give you a pass just because you're jealous Dijanae and Penny are the ones that I'm re like I'm I'm really ticked at because y'all already have boyfriends and you're mad that this this guy I didn't ask you out. Now, I can understand the perspective of this guy is a famous actor, or like, like if put in that situation in any school, girls or reverse it with a famous female actor, guys would flock to that person, in relationship or not. For example, take if you if you if you took Jason Momoa. Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, Robert Downey Jr. Take Tom Holland, take them and put them put them in that scenario with Noah Barker. Any 
girl who is into them or just into a nice looking guy or the fact that he's a fa famous actor will be coming flooding at him and reverse it with a woman take ha Halle Berry um Halle Berry Beyonce a Kiki Palmer her like guys would flock to her so so I can so I can at least understand why he was such a big deal. It's just that why is it that when someone takes an interest in Zoe, why does the only reason that he has an interest in her is because of her skin color? That is just that's a stupid excuse to be mean. That's a stupid excuse to be jerks to your best friend. Uh so and then um one key thing I want to touch on is that when when Demetrius and Kareem touched on the fact of the possibility of Noah having a preference and Maya just go bit like gets up in Demetrius face and saying it's okay to have a preference darn it my time is up having a preference for a girl's skin tone and my literal my literal answer was yes yes oh my gosh because because of the videos and stuff that i see you you probably might know what i'm talking about like girls can have any preference under the sun about a guy all right anything anything it's and even stuff that a guy cannot control unless you've got the money to do surgery or anything like that. But if a guy has one single preference or or just a nitpick, he's the worst person ever. So that's, that, that episode gets under my skin. The, the way it was presented, the way it was presented just got, was to me, was in the wrong way. And I, I, when I look for a good example of colorism, of col when I look for a good example of a show touching on that topic, my first thought was, if you've ever seen the show Different Strokes, there is a specific episode in that show that, to me, touches that topic perfectly. Anyway, let's get, now let me go into the episode that I did like, in fact, that I love, um, BB. So... The reason I love uh, BB uh, as an episode, code, and it's honestly my favorite of the series, these, and even probably from the first series too, it's my favorite because my baby brother, uh, I have a sibling who is on the autistic spectrum, he's autistic, and this, I knew just by reading the description of the episode that that episode was going to hit me touch me personally and it honestly did and it just hit the right marks to me because even throughout the even if I watch like if I watch the first season I could probably see hints of that maybe I can probably see hints of that but especially in season two you see hints of BB possibly being autistic leading up to that episode for example, at the end of a perfect ten, how how BB lands for just lands uh, a trapeze move on his feet just fine, uh, but also whenever he speaks, when we speak and he has uh, subtitles, like when you listen to the way that he speaks, the like some of the stuttering or um, impairment in between in that. I feel was leading up to that reveal feel and I like that because it didn't feel like it was coming out of nowhere because if you look like when I look closer I'm like they've been hinting at it leading up to it and I like how um when they spoke about it with the child therapist I thought that was a great conversation and how they executed um Trudy wanting to give BB the help he needs and and Oscar wanting to deny it because of the stigma and the earlier perception that autism had toward people with that saying like 
like just how the teacher said like a need of assistance does not equate a lack of ability because often like back then like earlier when before autism was so recognized people who were on the spectrum would have been seen as retarded um stupid unable to do th things and depending on where you are on the spectrum that is true there are things you can and can't do things you um may or may not be able able to do in life but it doesn't mean that you are useless it doesn't mean that you can't do anything you can't you, that you can't be anything so i understood oscar wine to deny it but i love how he came around in the in the end and the way um it showed bb get g being uh, at high places in the blink of an eye one the ending of the episode already explained that but i can just say from personal experience the fact of having even not even just my own brother being autistic just my sibling be able to to be from one sp space gone in an instant somewhere you think they could never get to without explanation so bb being up on on a roof honestly and being up high on that plane in the episode oh yes it, the show explains it perfectly but real life i've seen instances where yes that happens that's relatable it will so to so that that made me feel right at home in this episode um and i like how at the end it explained that bb is a what well bb's main big power is that he's able to fly and i and i love that connection because in hollywood and in media they always depict um depicted this way like if if you have autism you have superpowers or you have superhuman abilities he's and that's been going on for who knows how long and i at least like like it <laughs> it get like um you can call it a trope all, all you want but i like i think at least in, in a fictional standpoint it makes sense like the cost was you can't really experience or communicate with others like like uh, like most do but but the the but in exchange for that you get superhuman abilities or or a different kind of intellect or smart or intelligence and I could also say, like, for, with my own brother's experience, that's that's kind of true in real life because I have lit like he may he he's um he's very social. He likes interacting with me. He likes interacting with my siblings and my, our parents, like our family. Like he's very social. He likes being around other people. So that's not the issue. Um, but. I have seen repeatedly since he was lit, since he was a child um that how smart he is because something that I know I could could never do was play if you play the game Subway Surfers he would have two one time I saw him have three three devices a phone tablet and I think another phone or three phones together he played subway surfers on those devices at the same time and i kid you not i watched him i watched him play a and he had no problem playing them in sync he had no pro problem and i to this day i don't know how that is possible but i've seen him do that i've seen him sync um playing a movie or a show or a clip back like at the same time on different devices like from a tv onto a screen and not like not the screen share physically setting up the device to play it at the same time in sync i've seen him do it multiple times and i just think that's amazing so so this bb episode because it affects a person in my life personally he and I know the struggles he goes through, and yet he's he is hap he is happier. He's pretty much the happiest person you can meet. He he's the most joyous person 
He's one of the most joyous people I know. This episode touched my heart very much, and I love how they executed this. And my main hope for next season is that we get an episode for Cece. So since we got an episode for BB, let's get an episode for Cece. And his autism also explained. I didn't want, one thing I didn't want was for them to say, because he's wearing the cape, like the blanket cape all the time, that explains it. And they didn't go with that. And I'm happy about that. Um, But the one barefoot and one sock, Hawk, that that's accurate that's accurate because because my uh there are some fabrics and textures my brother hates he does not like on his clothes so over overall um again bb possibly my most favorite episode of the se- of the series as a whole full touch uh i almost want I thought for sure I would probably cry in the episode, but somehow it didn't break me. But it, it touched me very much. And the one I didn't like that much to the point where I probably... I probably... The... Uh, okay, other than Sugar Mama's message about if somebody doesn't like you, buff it. That I'm fine with because, yeah, like, if somebody doesn't isn't into you or doesn't like you because of a certain aspect of you... for like why should you care like and if you're looking for for somebody to date or somebody to marry something like that that i'm like why do you care there are tons of other people out there who will accept you for who you are like like don't focus yourself on getting this one person's attention or and which is why i was upset uh i was mad about penny being so bummed about it because she already has a boyfriend who loves her for who she is but um like, if somebody doesn't like a, a certain aspect about you or doesn't like you because of some something as much as your skin color or something like that, fine, fine. Like, why should I care? Who are you? Who are you to tell tell me what I should and shouldn't be? Like, there are other people out there who will who will accept me and love me for who I am. Like. Luca is an example of that. The the last message that Luca's grandma said, like there are some people who will never accept it, but the ones who do are what matters. So, uh, so those two episodes, oh, it's one that hit me in the best way, one hit me in the worst way. Way, anyway, yeah, those are my overall thoughts. I just wanted to, I wanted to voice that out. How much I love the BB episode and how much I hate. How much I, I hated the execution of the, of of colorism in end of is it's that that's it. But the main thing that I did like in the the thing that I did like in the end of is is as I said the Disney princess uh, dress up up competition. My my only wish was with Oscar. I understand that he's cheap, but if he had a a raggedy costume that made him look like his. If he looked like Hiss from Robin Hood, that would have been great because he could just have like basically a sleep a sleeping blanket, uh, a camping blanket, it to where he looks like a snake, and then wear the rest of the jester outfit because that's basically what Hiss looks like. Anyway, thank you, Legends, so much for watching. Uh, if you want me to speak more about the Proud family, I'll be happy to. Just let me know down in the comments. What did you think of the BB episode? And what did you think of the End of Innocence episode? Please let me know down in the comments. And thank you so much for 97 subscribers. We are so close to 100. Let's see if we can make it in the next few days. Let's see if we can make it to 100 in the next few days. Please comment, like, subscribe, share this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.